Hello there, thanks for taking the time to watch this video, at least I hope you do watch it right through to the end. Uh, the fact of the matter is that myself and my wife have been doing a Citroen Relay camper van conversion for the last few months and it's very nearly finished. And through that time we've made one or two uh, short videos about various little aspects of the build that we've done. We were going to do a full build video, however, <laughs> dare I say it, once I saw Greg's output on uh, YouTube I thought, well, why on earth should I bother because that guy's done the first and the last of any build videos you're ever going to need. But of course you probably know that already. So what I am going to do is put up one or two videos about things that are specific to our van or things that perhaps that are specific to um, overcoming a problem or a dilemma that some other people may or may not have. And if we've got an answer that solves your problem for you, well then great. Uh, this particular video is inspired by watching Geeky Phil and his mates on the live stream uh, the other week at the South Central uh, Motorhome Build Forum. And uh, for all I've had the raw version of this uh, waiting to be edited, uh, I just felt that one of the subjects that came up was worthy of um, being dealt with now because it seemed to be a current topic that particularly the Wander and Womble uh, was having a problem with in his van. So forgive me, this is the first time I've ever filmed anything, edited anything and certainly the first time I've ever posted anything. So bear with me and uh, I'm hoping to come up with a solution to a problem that people have when running 240 volt fridges or other appliances in the van and this idea that you have to have your inverter running all of the time. Well good morning guys here we are we're inside of our van uh, which is a long wheelbase Citroen Relay and the reason I'm making this little video now is that having seen Geeky Phil's uh, live stream, although I watched it on record rather than live, uh, one of the Wandering Wombles problems seemed to be that having to keep an inverter running all the time for a 240 volt fridge. Well, that's not actually the case because I came up with a little idea in our van, which has been tried and tested over three and a half thousand miles for four weeks, and it absolutely works a treat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the fridge that we chose from eBay for £104 and how I've connected it up and how, I'm, well, as I say, I can prove that it actually works. OK, so we decided very early on that we weren't really interested in having a freezer in the van. So I was a bit horrified at the cost of motorhome fridges, whether they be 12 volt, 3 way or 240 volt. And so I scanned eBay to find something that A matched the decor and B was cheap and C had a low power consumption. Uh, in other words, a candidate that I felt that there was something I could do with. And I chose this fella here. Now what I will do is show you where it's listed on eBay so that if you fancy having a go at this yourself, then, you know, you can uh, outlay not too much money and uh, if you find that it works just as good for you as it does for us well then happy days and you will have saved yourselves an absolute bomb now then in here there's a little can't really call it a freezer compartment but it's a chiller compartment but i did find that when you buy the six pack of ice creams from Lidl's and you only want to eat two uh, you can stick the other four in there, not in the box though, but laying on the actual plate and they will stay frozen. And that was despite being in Italy where the air temperature outside of the van was between 30 and 35 degrees. Now I'm not actually promoting this particular fridge because any, you know, low consumption 240 volt fridge will do. But this hasn't got any real bells and whistles on it, which is what I really like about it. In other words, there's no light in it, although you could easily fit one. And you just have a simple, normal thermostat down in the bottom. Because one thing about this van build, I wanted to keep any electronics I possibly could out of this van uh, in terms of controlling my appliances. And I want everything to be back to basics, dead simple. In theory, nothing can go wrong. Moment. This electrics cupboard is a job in progress. I'm quite embarrassed to show you how untidy the rest of it is. However, what we're here to do is to just focus on this fella here. Now, this fella is a cheap as chips, yet again from eBay, 1000 watt inverter, 
which cost me, I think, including postage, something like 35 quid. Now then, how I've connected this to the fridge is, it's not really genius, but I think a lot of you guys will suddenly realize, well, why didn't I think of that? Because it is very, very simple. First of all, and I can't show you because the fridge is installed, I disconnected the thermostat from the rear of the fridge. So it is completely separate from the compressor. The compressor is fed with uh, 240 volts from this side of the inverter. Now I know everybody says, oh dear, you can't have the inverter running all of the time. Well, in fact, I don't. Because what I've done is I've put the thermostat, the mechanical thermostat in the fridge on a 12 volt circuit. And that 12 volt circuit, which is fed from my uh, leisure batteries, is obviously switched through the thermostat. So when there's a demand for cooling, it energizes that 12 volt circuit, which in turn energizes this vehicle relay. I've just happened to use a 30 amp one. And when that relay is energized, it then in turn turns on the inverter. There's about a one to two seconds delay and a little beep. And then the inverter powers up and here presto the compressor fires up because this 240 volt feed to that fridge is only for the fridge and is not connected to anything else. Therefore, to put it in very simple terms, once the fridge is down to temperature, the thermostat shuts off the 12 volt circuit. The 12 volt circuit is broken at the relay, which in turn then shuts off the supply from the leisure batteries to the inverter. And then the inverter goes to sleep and it'll sit like that for as long as it takes for the fridge to demand more cooling. Then again, don't want to make it uh, like I'm teaching granny how to suck eggs, but of course, then the thermostat will close. The relay will be energized, the inverter will then be powered up, and then the compressor will begin to run. Now I carry uh, a 260 amp hour battery reserve, which is underneath the driver's seat, and going by the uh, battery level indicator that came with my sergeant unit, there is no significant drain on the batteries by using this fridge. And as I said, that was even in conditions where the outside temperature was 30 plus degrees. Now, if I had to have one little observation about my first mock-up of this, it was that the inverter is currently screwed to the outside of the bathroom wall, sorry, the shower room wall. And during the night, that vibration of the cooling fan was traveling through the van to be honest after the first night you kind of got used to it and you stopped hearing it however obviously that could be improved i have tried dumping it down with some of this um, sort of foam matting didn't really make any difference however i did find that a car washing sponge sat on the floor really quietened it down it's not fixed to that yet i will come up with something along those lines and then in my opinion this thing will run virtually silent because the noise from the compressor is minimal you really really have to listen for it if you want to uh, know whether the fridge is running or not Okay then, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a demand for the fridge with by just turning up the thermostat. And of course, remember, this thermostat is switching in a 12 volt circuit, which has nothing whatsoever to do with the compressor on the fridge itself. And I'll just quickly move over now to where the inverter is stored. And bearing in mind, remember, that the circuit will switch the little relay that's just dangling around there in midair. The inverter will come on. And then, after a slight delay, the uh, and it's already running now, but of course with the lid off and the cushion off the top of the seat, the, uh, the inverter is sounding noisier than it normally would, and the fridge well you just cannot really hear it at all. And then, so let's imagine that the fridge is now satisfied its temperature de demands. Instantly, 
the inverter is switched off. So this saves you a ton of power. The fridge stays cold and it only comes on when it needs to. So now having established that the electrics on the fridge works and it is efficient, it doesn't deplete the batteries too much, uh, a, a little bit of housekeeping that we can do to improve upon that. So what we did, although I haven't got them here, we bought some containers. I suppose you could use big margarine tubs or whatever, but we happen to have some sealable uh, Tupperware type containers and we matched them up to fit the shelves perfectly. So rather than having lots and lots of individual items in there and you've got the door open and you're rooting around in there taking forever and all the cold's falling out on the floor, you simply know which box it's in, you grab the box and you shut the door. And then you get it up on the bench, get what you want, you open the door and you put it back in. Again, it's common sense really, but uh, it saves a lot of uh, cold falling out of the fridge and therefore running time on the batteries. So the other thing as well, uh, and this didn't become apparent until actually using the van, uh, while I'm driving along, patting myself on the back because we've now had three days of the fridge working absolutely perfectly, everything's nice and cold, what a clever boy am I, it wasn't until we got onto a twisty windy road and having gone round a sharp corner that I suddenly realised, damn it, a domestic fridge doesn't have a catch on it because what happened was we went round the corner the door flew open and everything fell out on the floor uh, <laughs> so immediately we had to come up with a solution thankfully well saying thankfully it didn't look too good but for the next few days we drove around with a bungee cord stretched across the front of the fridge and, and then I've spent loads of time on eBay and motorhome sites looking at a possible catch that I could maybe fit to this fridge and didn't find anything that that I felt was what I wanted to use. I didn't want to be poking my fingers down the side or anything like that. And uh, I didn't really want to spoil what I think is quite a nice looking fridge. And that's when I had the great idea. And again, usually the best ideas are the ones that are staring you right in the face. Uh, fridges, as you know, you can reverse the doors. And on the side that you're not using the hinges, they have a little blanking plug over the hole. So there we go. There's the hole. Take the blanking plug out. The fridge is mounted underneath a shelf. Can't quite see it because the light's shading it there. So I drilled down through the shelf into appropriate place and we just simply use a cut-off bolt which shoves down there and goes into the hole. And that's it. When we're driving, the door will never, ever come open. Well, here's the listing for that fridge on today's page on eBay. It's the 9th of November and I can see that the price has gone up by give or take 10 quid. And here is a, an inverter which is very similar to one that I used. I know I see it says 500 watts on it, but the one I've got is actually 1000 watts. But look at the price, it's only 18 quid. And just a quick one to explain why we've chosen the name that we've got. Uh, we live in a little village called Craster in Northumberland, which apparently is world famous for smoking herrings and making kippers. And given that the, uh, the slang around here for having a quick nap or a, a quick sleep is to have a kip, we just thought that we would be the Craster Kippers. But of course, I can't use that because my friend Neil, who owns the business, uses that for his business. So we just thought we'd include the word camper van as well. So here we are, the Craster Camper Van Kippers. So I suppose in the normal YouTube speak, please can I ask you to subscribe? I'm not too sure that I'll be putting out lots of content regularly. However, if I can get a few subscribers or a few likes, then that'll certainly encourage me to try. And I promise I'll try and get a bit better with it as I go along. Uh, if you've got any comments about the content of this particular video, then obviously please leave them below. And hopefully they'll all be positive, but I'll take the negative ones as well. And uh, we'll just see where we go from there. So thank you.